case two. I can do this one. Okay. Um, so kind of like nodular structures in the dermis. <clears throat> Good. With this chunked up purple material. Um, so it looks like calcium deposits and then some fibrosis around them. Um, so I think looking at the site too is helpful. Yes. Um, Are there any clues to the for, site here? I think there, there are. Um, so there's kind of bundles of smooth muscle. Um, so probably on um, like a genital site or um, maybe like nipple if you see smooth muscle. So this would be good for idiopathic scrotal calcinosis. Yeah, very good. This, These are uh, abundant smooth muscle bundles, way more abundant than you would expect for like, uh, you know, normal erector pili muscles that are you know, one per hair follicle, but there's tons of them all right here jumbled together. And a lot of them are kind of small. See how little some of these are? When you have a lot of smooth muscle bundles deep in the dermis and, and many of them are smaller, right away I'm going to suspect that we're in a genital site. And that would be usually the scrotum or the uh, embryologic homolog of that, the labia majora, right? And also you can see sometimes in the skin of the penile shaft and other places in the genitals. But but generally, genital site, when you see a lot of little smooth muscle bundles down in the deep derms, nipple, like you said, and areola also have a lot of smooth muscle bundles, but they tend to be a lot larger. And um, <clears throat> there is a little kind of subtle difference there. But in any case, nipple, areola, and genitals is a good thing to places to think of when you see smooth muscle bundles. And as you nicely described, there's multiple uh, nodular aggregates of chunky and granular kind of calcifications. In the dermis, so when you have that on the scrotum, that's called, like you said, idiopathic scrotal calcinosis. And people have debated over the years why this happens on the scrotum, if this is, if this is a type of just calcinosis cutis, which it, to me this looks identical to calcinosis cutis. Some people have postulated that maybe these arise as, um, as types of epidermoid cysts that then subsequently calcify. I can't remember if what the current thinking is. I've always had a little bit of a hard time buying that because I never uh, see... <clears throat> squamous epithelium with these. I always just see nodular aggregates of calcium with adjacent fibrosis. So it doesn't, I don't know that it matters, but anyway, these tend to be multifocal, multinodular um, on the scrotum and uh, kind of a yellowish to whitish look uh, clinically. Um, in, in many cases, you may have epidermal reactive hyperplasia over top of it. And then the calcium, just like in calcinosis cutis, it can range from being big, large chunks or fine powdery granules, and it's going to be purple um, and uh, refractile here. You can see how the fragments are all different shapes and, and uh, are really uh, falling apart because they are hard to cut through on the microtome in the histology lab. So if you had this anywhere else, you would just call this calcinosis cutis. If you had a similar looking appearance like this down in a deep soft tissue site or in a joint, you would call it tumoral calcinosis. All of them are basically aggregates of dystrophic calcification, um, and uh, they all look very similar microscopically and just have different names depending on the different context. Good job. So scrotal calcinosis here.